the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank, Thank you Holy Spirit. Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I would like to welcome each one of you to hear the word of God. The book of the Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 44 the Bible says while Peter was still speaking the Holy Spirit fell upon everyone who heard the word. Now let us ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill our hearts. If possible, close your eyes. We are going to sing a song now. It's a song about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a spirit of deliverance. He comes and gives us healing, deliverance and anointing. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. fill us holy spirit touch the hearts of the faithful holy spirit give us new anointing a fresh anointing we need you holy spirit come holy spirit fire anointing mighty anointing flow into me fire anointing mighty anointing flow into me the light of Israel fill me with your fire burn burn in me burn all thorns and briars holy spirit light of Israel holy spirit fill me with your fire come burn burn in me burn all thorns and briars life let me be a fire burn in my heart burn in my soul let your fire make me a new fire anointing mighty anointing flow into me oh fire anointing mighty anointing flow come holy spirit fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle into the fire of your love send forth your spirit and they shall be created come holy spirit just as you came upon the apostles and empowered them we need you holy spirit we need a fresh outpouring of your presence come holy spirit anointing on your apostles Fill me holy spirit holy spirit baptize me with your holy fire yes holy spirit your holy fire holy spirit anointing on your apostles fill me holy spirit holy spirit baptize me with your holy fire your holy fire Come praise Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Fill us with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise your name. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. For anointing. Mighty anointing flow into me. Fire anointing, mighty anointing flow into me. Dear Holy Spirit, come and fill us with your love. Come and fill us with your presence. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. You are the advocate. You are the consoler. Come, Holy Spirit. Teach us to pray. Teach us to love Jesus in a deeper manner. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 26, St. Paul says, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with the sighs too deep for words. So St. Paul, though he was a very popular preacher, very powerful man, who had a direct intervention of the risen Lord, acknowledges that he is weak. He doesn't know how to pray as he ought. So he says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with the size too deep for words. So in my life, I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in a very tangible way. While I was studying in the seminary, I had a problem, a special type of fear. Maybe we can call it a stage fear, whatever it may be. I was really scared in assisting the Holy Mass. I belong to an Oriental Catholic Church called the Sura Malabar Church. So in our Holy Mass, the altar service got a big role. So the altar service should read the epistle, should do the bidding praise and lots of praise. And I was really scared to do those things. So I remember one day while I was reading the epistle, I couldn't continue that because of this fear. Then I stopped reading the epistle. Then afterwards, I had to read the bidding praise. After reading one or two bidding prayers, I couldn't continue it. So I stopped it and some of the parishioners came forward and they recited the other praise. So really, I was ashamed before my parishness. Anyway, I continued my studies. 
And when I started my theology studies, my parish priest asked me to give a homily on Good Friday. Then I told him, Father, I am scared of this. Then Father said, no, the Holy Spirit will help you. Anyway, I, I prepared my homily. Then because of this fear, I was not able to sleep. I was really, really worried about this. Then on Monday, Thursday, there was 13 hours of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament in my home parish. So I came before the Lord with all my stress. I sat before him. I really did not know what to pray and how to pray. And the Holy Spirit began to help me. The Holy Spirit began to help me. I did not know how to pray. So the Spirit helped me how to pray. When I closed my eyes and sat before the Lord, the Holy Spirit began to flow into my heart. Then I remembered a word of God that I heard during the time of a spiritual conference. The first letter of St. John, chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, the one who is inside you is greater than the one who is outside the world. The one who is in you is the Holy Spirit. And the one who is outside the world is spirit of fear, spirit of timidity. But the Holy Spirit is greater than all other spirits. So I asked, oh Holy Spirit, fill me with your power. Fill me with your courage. I need you, Holy Spirit. Without you, I can't do anything. I am, I am, I am a, a vessel. I am like a vessel, Holy Spirit. Help me. That day, the Holy Spirit literally helped me. My dear brothers and sisters, I really received his strength and power during that prayer time. I still remember that day. Afterwards, all my fear vanished away from me. I got a new spirit. You know, in the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7, St. Paul says, you received not a spirit of timidity, but you have received spirit of power, spirit of strength, and spirit of love. So I have already received this spirit, this spirit of strength and power and love, but he was not active in my life. But when I was very weak, and when I was not able to say a prayer, I really relied on him, and I asked the Holy Spirit to help me. Then he began to help me in a very powerful manner. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I am trying to say to you, speak to you is that the same Holy Spirit who helped me in my weakness can help you. Whatever weakness you may have, the Holy Spirit is all powerful, is omnipotent God. He can help you. Hallelujah. 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 We know in the life of St. Augustine, who was in a sinful condition, touched by the word of God, and the Lord gave him a new heart, he prayed a very beautiful prayer to the Holy Spirit. I shall say that prayer for St. Augustine said, O Holy Spirit, descend plentifully into my heart. Enlighten the dark corners of this neglected dwelling and scatter there your cheerful beams. So St. Augustine was inviting the Holy Spirit into the dark corners of his neglected dwelling. And I asked the Holy Spirit to scatter his cheerful beams. My dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit, who is really living in us, can help us in all our weaknesses. That's why Jesus gave us a great promise. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will be with you forever. So this is one of the most important characteristics of the Holy Spirit. The imminent presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, 
I'll ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate or another consoler, because Jesus is Jesus is a consoler, and He is promising us that the Heavenly Father will give another advocate or another consoler, and what is His speciality? He will be with you forever, the permanent presence of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. So this Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, in our souls. That's why the catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us like this. He is really, truly, and personally in our souls, even as he is in heaven. Every soul in the state of grace is a living tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. So the church fathers teaching us the Holy Spirit is really, truly, and personally present in our souls as he is present in heaven. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to acknowledge his presence. In his letter, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. So St. Paul says, examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves. So what is the test? The risen Lord is in you. The risen Lord is living in our hearts. So if you are not realizing this fact, you have failed in the test. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And St. Paul again said in his letter to Romans, chapter 8, verse 11, the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. And that Holy Spirit can give you a new life. The Holy Spirit can give you our mortal bodies a fresh outpouring, a fresh anointing, a new life. So the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in me. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Some of you might have heard of Origen, who is a church father. And his father's name is Leonidas. When Origen was a small child, his father used to kneel down beside his bed and used to kiss Origen's breast and say, I adore you, Holy Spirit. I praise you, Holy Spirit. You are really living in the soul of my son. And when Origin grew up, he speaks about the imminent presence of the Holy Spirit like this. He says, our souls are little heavens because God is really in them. So his father had this realization that his son is an abode of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the early church, all the church fathers had this strong conviction that the Holy Spirit was dwelling in their souls. For example, St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was a martyr. So just before his martyrdom, he was really persecuted by uh, Emperor Trajan. And while he was standing before him, the emperor asked, why you are called Christ bearer? Then Ignatius said, don't you know that the spirit of Jesus is in me? The spirit of God is really inside of my soul. All the church fathers had this strong conviction that they had this this presence of the Holy Spirit in their souls. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus is reminding us today. I will ask the father and he'll give you another advocate who will be with you forever. Let us close our eyes. Oh Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, increase in us the faith that you are truly personally present in our souls. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your presence. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Oh, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Now we are in the presence of the blessed sacrament. He is here. He is touching us. Psalm 62 verse 2. The Bible says, He alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress, and I will never be shaken. Now let us Raise our hearts and hands towards him and give him glory and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the power of Christ in me. Jesus. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he would turn and cause me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Thank you, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the fortress. You are our refuge. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 4, verse 4. The one who is inside me is greater than the one who is outside the world. Now we receive his blessing. Once again, let us surrender our entire life to him and let us be aware of his presence. Lord Jesus, fill us with your presence. Now let us receive his blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Most Yeah. 